Hi, this is Roger from Kanka Labs, today with another edition of what every maker should have one. Perhaps today we should call it what every advanced maker should have one of. You might remember I already talked about what every maker should have one when it comes to soldering and optical aids and two things were sufficient for me for the last 10 or 15 years. That is this jeweler's magnifier or loop uh, with a I think 20 times or 30 times magnification and an LED lighting etc and for soldering and test work this headband loop here with a variable magnification in two steps with which I can work for hours without any fatigue but when you do more and more SMD soldering and smaller and smaller pin pitches, then at one time or another you will have the, the wish to upgrade to a stereo microscope. And the one that is universally recommended if you're on a budget is uh, this SE400. I got this from Mscope, which is the main supplier in the US and they are present at eBay. Of course they come from China and for example in Germany they sell for under a different brand name for 50% more. So I got this one here. Uh, if you buy it in the US or a US citizen you get it for $200 at eBay or directly at mscope.com and express delivery to Germany, including import fees and taxes, uh, cost me I think 200 euros and a little bit. And for that money this thing is really unbeatable. So let's first of all talk about the good things about this thing. It has a very heavy base so it's uh, quite difficult to make it tip over even though it does look here that it easily tips. Uh, the, the base is really very heavy. It has an adjustable articulating arm which can be adjusted in every direction and turn etc. Uh, but the most important things are look at this large working distance because what you want to do with it is you want to solder under a microscope and therefore you need a lot of space just for your hand and your solar iron and the working distance is really great. Second is this uh, flexible gooseneck, or in Germany we call it swansneck LED light, which is totally cold. There is also a version with an incandescent light bulb, which comes in here. Don't buy this, buy the one with the gooseneck LED light. You get it uh, for 110 or 230 volts, and I think uh, the only difference is uh, the plug in the mains cable because on the back it says 100 up to 240 volts so it's uh, apparently universal power supply for the LED. Now this is a true stereo microscope. Uh, we will later take off here this cover and see that there are really two lenses at an angle um, so that you get a real stereo image. There are also microscopes that look like a stereo microscope but in fact have only one main lens and then a beam splitter and so you have two eye ports uh, but not a true stereo vision. Um, of course it has adjustable interpupillary distance that is very important because no two persons on earth have the same distance between their eyes the left one here is focusable. That is also extremely important. You, if, if you ever have worked with binoculars, you, you know how to work with this. Uh, first of all, you close the eye with the variable focus. Then you focus only with, the, in this case, the right eye open. And you focus here with this rack and pinion uh, drive. And then you make it the other way around. When you have focused the fixed focus eyepiece, uh, then you close this eye and focus here um, with this helical focusing mechanism. And uh, so that both of your eyes have are both in perfect focus. Now, 
the optics of this thing for that money is incredibly good. Of course, you cannot expect a Leica or Zeiss or Zeiss as, as they are really called in Germany uh, performance or like a, an Olympus or Nikon microscope. But for the small magnifications that we need for SMD soldering and re rework, um, the optical quality is really, really good. So next is you have a choice of eyepieces. You can see here in a, in a microscope the magnification is the product of the main lens magnifications, which in this case is one times. And on your eyepieces uh, there are printed the magnification and you just have to multiply the two numbers. So the standard version comes with 10 times eyepieces, which give you a total magnification of 10 times 1 equals 10. But you should be very aware of, uh, they also have 20 times eyepieces and 5 times eyepieces. And Louis Rossmann warned, do not buy the 20 times eyepieces. They have an extremely narrow field of view and they are really of no use. By the way, the perfect magnification would be 7.5 in my view. Um, so, um, of course, I didn't buy the 20 times eyepieces, but I thought, okay, a smaller magnification, like five times, would also be handy. So I bought this uh, with the additional five times eyepiece. And you can see WF, which stands for wide field. So this is quite true for the 10 times eyepieces. They are really wide field eyepieces. By the way, this gives a field of linearly around a little bit more than two centimeters on nearly one inch uh, here in the focal plane. But look at the five times eyepieces. You, you can judge the field angle of, of an eyepieces uh, by the diameter of the first lens here. And you can see the five times eyepieces. They have a smaller lens. I don't know if you can see it on camera. They have a smaller eye lens than the 10 times. And this is clearly an indication these are not wide field eyepieces. And in fact, they, gave, they give the, you the same linear field. They also give you this 20 millimeters. So this is, this is a total waste of uh, money. Just by the only version that is recommendable is this 10 times eyepieces. What I additionally bought, because it, I wasn't clear uh, if both of the IP sets have these rubber eye guards. I bought an extra uh, set of rubber eye guards and they are all different. The one that comes original with the five times eye pieces is different than the one that is supplied with the ten times and it's again different from the one you can buy separately. And the one you can buy separately are the best. You can see the Perhaps if I take one off, they are a little bit bigger and they are much, they have a much softer rubber and the five times have very hard rubber. So what you should buy is these additional rubber eye guards or eye cups or however they are called. Uh, for me, these work from three versions here. They really work best and they cost a few dollars extra. So, um, now what's more important than the optical quality of be it a microscope or a telescope is what's called collimation. And collimation means that the field that you are viewing in both eyes is exactly identical. And there are a lot of points if you would open this. Uh, there are screws, adjustment screws all over and I would not recommend to open this and try your hands at any screw, but you should, you should do a, an initial test. The one that I got, um, there the two fields of view were not exactly concentric. There was an offset of around five millimeters and that is much too much. So this is, was clearly out of collimation. And because I'm also in the telescope hobby and star watching, I know a little bit about collimation because telescope optics and microscope optics, they have many similarities. And uh, so I'll show you uh, just in a second 
what I did, where I tried my hand on to collimate this thing and uh, you should really make this as the first test if the two pictures in the left and the right eye, if they give you exactly the, that's easiest done with the ruler um, where you can directly see any, any offset between left and right eye. So uh, we will take this off and I'll show you how I collimated mine at least sufficiently. If you don't do this, you get, it's only a matter of time until you get headaches. And at my first view through this uh, stereo microscope, I immediately noticed there is something wrong. And um, after a few minutes, you really get headaches. And now it's, it's at least that well collimated that I've, I've worked for one hour here. This was my first soldering with it uh, for my flip clock. Uh, what did I do? One, two, three, four, five ICs and a few other components that was around an hour and it was really a joy to work with this uh, microscope. So let's take this little black cover off. There is one set screw here and I've already taken out the other one. So now you can see the lens assembly of the primary uh, lenses and you can see uh, that they are angled. I hope you can see it on, on camera. Um, perhaps I'll turn it a little bit so you can see it perhaps better now that they are angled and um, they are meeting in ideally exactly on the center of the field. And now there's this little stage here. And um, I think you even can buy a primary lens set with 0.75 times magnification. That would give exactly 7.5 magnification with the 10 times eyepieces. So now we'll have to unscrew or loosen two other screws. I hope this works out on camera. Then you can get this stage here off. No, it was only one. So, on, and when I first unscrewed this, the left lens here, let's see, was not concentric. You can, perhaps you can see it. the right one here is concentric to the, to the round hole. The left one is still a little bit off, but it's not that disturbing anymore. And there are two screws um, which you shouldn't loosen very much uh, because they interact with each other. Each lens has one screw on the side and one angle screw here. And with that you can shift them and, and collimate them. So this is still not perfect, but it's so much better that I now can work. If I wouldn't have gotten this adjusted by myself, I would have sent it back and made a claim to send me a new one. But thankfully um, I could repair this by myself. So um, that was it for a first uh, impression and I'm really happy uh, with that. I will now try to use my smartphone uh, camera to show you a view through uh, at least one of the eyepieces. I'm not sure if this uh, really works because of nothing beats the true view with your own, both of your own eyes through this microscope and then uh, really trying to solder something um, with that. But believe me, it's really, the bang for buck of this thing is really incredible and it's, if you have $200 or euros get what and are doing SMD uh, soldering or re rework get one of these you will never regret it so there are certainly better ones but they cost at least three five seven or times as much so look in the price list what a Leica Olympus or Zeiss stereo microscope costs and it's sometimes a month salary what you have to spend 
for a stereo microscope that is much better still than this one but this is really completely sufficient even for long time work with uh, small components. So I can't show you a video with my smartphone but instead I will try to make a still. Uh, what you can see is a uh, 28 pin SSOP I see and to the left you can see 0.3 millimeter solder wire and a one millimeter chisel tip from my st solder station and this is exactly the solder tip and the solder that I soldered this IC to the PCB and you don't have to do drag soldering I just managed to solder every pin single and you get no no shivering hands or this was really a joy to solder and compare the results to what I was able to achieve by hand before that with my headband loop. So this is really an incredible upgrade for me. And in fact, the true field of view is larger than what you can see here on the picture in the back background that I'm uh, talking over. So if you liked it, then please give it a big thumbs up and see you next time on the M Show, what every maker should have one of.